Well, hello everyone and welcome to my channel DB Designs and Sewing Australia. Welcome or welcome back. Lovely to have new subscribers and today is my Friday Sews. So, let's get on with it. What did I do this week? My new buttonhole foot still has not come. And so, as these skirts have elastic in the back, and it's highly unlikely that you would undo a skirt that's this little. I just put the stud buttons on and I actually, yeah, so this is the size one. That's for Mia. And this is the size four that is for Adele. And Phoebe is a size four and she already has hers. So I got those finished and that's actually the little Lizard King A-line skirt. It's a lovely pattern. And to be honest, you don't need to do buttonholes in it. They're all got elastic back, so they can all just be a pull-on skirt, which is probably, if you're four, how you're gonna put it on anyway. So really liking that pattern. And when I finish making my green, what did I buy? Green denim to make the long green denim skirt. I'll see if I've got any fabric left. Maybe I can get some more for the girls out of that fabric. So that's just the backs on the center fold and the fronts are of course separate pieces. And you do have, so even if I didn't have enough fabric, the bottom part of it is a facing, which actually makes it look really nice. But there's no reason why I couldn't use um, wide, homemade bias binding in a different fabric to do the facings on that those skirts so that's also an option if I didn't have very much fabric left now despite not having um, received my new buttonhole foot I was able to do the buttonholes in my three shirts now the shirts are the pattern emporium all in easy fit shirt and that is exactly what it is it is an easy fit shirt and it's absolutely lovely so the one made out of the wicked fabric you can see the buttonhole I did not do too bad a job on the buttonholes Put the right side out so I was able to get those buttonholes done and the buttons sewn on and admittedly I did sew all the buttons on with the sewing machine because I had so many buttons to sew on and um, I'll insert photos now this shirt is big enough to wear something under it so in the photos some of the photos I think just wearing it with ready to wear jeans and um, one of the white uh, one of the Trudy turtlenecks in a white. So it's absolutely the look I was going for it for with this striped shirt and with light colored denim jeans. But the fabric, as I said, is a bit of a disappointment because it's really 80s tracksuit fabric, really. Well, I think it was called parachute tracksuits. I think that's what they were called in the day, but I got that one done and this one I also got the buttonholes done on and I've just used normal I guess they're called clear um, shirt buttons because I didn't want the buttons to be the focal point of it it's not what the shirt was it's actually looks more like a men's business shirt really and this fabric this is a hundred percent cotton this fabric is absolutely beautiful. It feels really nice on and really, really happy with the result of that. I will be inserting photos, but yeah, very, very nice and good shirts. You can wear things under it or you can wear a jumper over it with the collar out. And the last one I got done was the black one. Now this was in a, did they call it mersted or worsted or? It just really meant that it was polished, so beaten. So more like a um, 
cotton sateen but not thick like a cotton sateen it really is only a shirting weight but when I put it on seriously it looks like a bloke's shirt so probably can wear it under something or I think in one of the photos I'm wearing it with a scarf so probably just need to style it up a bit to get a better effect because it really looks like you've got a man's shirt on more so than the business shirt style that the other one looks like this really looks like a man's shirt buttonholes came together easily I'm not sure if it was a buttonhole foot I managed even though I glued the little one of the little rubber um, bottoms back on that stayed glued on which was good so I had that make and the other thing I made this week was I made three Trudy turtlenecks now this is the Trudy turtleneck by wardrobe by me and all in I have now made seven of these and it does sound like a lot but I actually wear them all the time and although I'm not allowed to, I, I need to wear my uniform to work because it's winter time and you always wear your jacket I'll often wear um, one of the polar necks under the jacket and I just thought I needed some more to go with other things now as I said this looks like tomato orange red like if you think of um, it's actually called 475 on a Pantone color chart but it's actually a very dark blue based red. I don't know how I can get it to look like the real color it is. But when I look at that, that looks orange on the screen too, but it's actually a very dark red. So just must be my camera on my iPad. So I made this one and it's really, really lovely. This is in the merino wool from the fabric store. Now we've got uh, the fabric store. I don't have to go online. I can go to the fabric store in Melbourne. So it is quite a fair way away. So it's not really the other side of the city, but it's really getting in towards the center of the city. But when I go to my daughter's place, one of my daughter's place, um, you actually bypass the city. So I just take a quick detour and go in. So this is the red colorway, which is absolutely gorgeous. And this is another one in the merino wool. Now this is white. This actually comes up the real color that it is because it's really quite a stark white. You would probably call it, and I think that I can see blue or purple in it. So it really is a very white, white. Now I've, uh, I've got that in one of the photos under the blue and white striped shirt. So not, uh, not something that I would wear generally with nothing over the top because it's white and be able to see every lump and bump that you've got. Um, but as a um, as an under layering piece be very very good and stark white is actually fine right up by my face so that's another versatile piece I'd been looking for some white and they hadn't had white last time I was in the fabric store that had I think it's called eggshell or something like that so it was slightly off-white if it was a pearly white I probably would have bought it because they're often a bit pink based but they didn't have any of that now this is my favorite this is actually coming up on camera exactly the color it is too I don't know what's with the reds um, and this is an aubergine color this is my favorite I'm just going to go and get my steamer skirt and just like that I'm back and the reason that I was choosing this color or looking for a purple color 
was to go with the Steena skirt, which I must say I've worn a few times now and I only just made it the other day. So I'm absolutely loving it. This Steena skirt is my most favorite make of the year so far. Before that, it was the green Tazuti Harlow jacket and pants set, but now it's the Steena skirt. Let's see if I can get this to look as it should. So I just thought that was a really great color shirt to wear with this skirt. And I have been wearing the skirt with um, the polo neck jumpers. So I've worn it with the navy one, I've worn it with the black one. Um, I haven't really worn it with the magenta one because there is no pink in this, but I'm still thinking that the red will actually go really well with the skirt as well. So that was one of the reasons that I was making these and the white because I needed a layering piece. So really, really happy with Trudy Turtlenecks. As you, well, you don't make seven of them if you're not happy with them. So I find it to be a really good fit. I re I've got one on today. Look, I've got the black one on. It's not tight on your neck. I don't want anything that's tight or strangling me. And the fabric, because it's the merino wool, really soft, no itching, no... And from an eczema person that gets rashes from everything. So really, really excellent um, quality fabric. And I just wash them in the washing machine in, in a lingerie bag. I've had the black merino jumper for a fair few years now. And the reason that I got into making it was I had a really old merino wool polo neck jumper it was really way too big for me and I'd worn it for probably four years and so it was pretty ruined and it was the brand foil f-o-i-l from New Zealand and I'd bought it at the cordial factory which is a shop in Sunbury and when I was going to see my sister I said to my husband oh let's go to the cordial factory and see if um they've got any more of those jumpers and when I get there the shop's empty the only thing that's in it is mail on the floor that's come through the slot the shop had closed down so when I got home I found the brand and I emailed them and surprisingly they emailed me back and they were in New Zealand and um, the lady had said that they do not have any of that stock because it was a fair few years old and no shop that they know of has got any of that stock left and anything that they would get returned would be because it had a fault or someone had miswashed it and wanted their money back um, but that she would keep me on file in case something happened and they did get some more or they were making some more so then I decided, well, I'm never going to be able to get this. Let's find the fabric. And that's when I found um, thefabricstore.com. And I, first of all, um, purchased it online. So I purchased this black online and I had the other jumper. And I also, I'd already had the Trudy Turtleneck printed out. So I stuck that together because it's PDF. And, um, and I measured the jumper against it and it was a little bit narrower and that was exactly what I wanted. So this was the first one I made and the shape was exactly the same as the one that I had purchased several, several years before. And so then I started making them and I haven't stopped making them since. I have considered using a different pattern, but then I thought, well, why would I? This one fits really well. I love them. I love the neck of it. You can also do a neck that's not a fold down. That is a crew neck that comes to there. I've never actually made that one. I'm not sure why. Um, and yeah, that's why I love them. 
So the other thing I made is what I've got on today. I have made the yo-yo skirt by Stylark and the yo-yo top by Stylark. Now it's hard to tell from the images, but well, you can probably tell from the picture more. One of the tops is really short and one's quite long. And I didn't want it um, really long and I didn't want it really cropped like a teenager would wear. So um, I sort of made it in between. When I look at the pattern piece, I actually made it nine centimetres shorter than the long version plus the hem. Now, I have no idea where I got this fabric from. And I really, it was probably really, really cheap. So I suspect Spotlight or somewhere like that when it was on sale. And I was really using it for a test, find a top that I can make the beautiful fabric up that I got from the Dahlia Society. So I have got this gorgeous fabric from the Dahlia Society and it's called Sweater Knit. And it's still there because I actually just went and bought another meter to make sure I would have enough. Because originally I was only going to make a jumper out of it. But then I thought, you know what? I've really gotten into wearing skirts. So since the Steena skirt, I'm just turning into a skirt person. And since it's winter and I really like wearing boots, and I've got so many pairs of boots, short boots, long boots, um, that it seems a waste not to show them if you're wearing long boots. Mind you, this is quite a long skirt. You can see from the image how long the skirt is on that lady. Well, it's much longer than that on me, but that's fine. I'll insert photos. So, so I've got this beautiful fabric and I really wanted to find the right patterns before um, I cut into it. I'll show you the other patterns I've got in mind. So, this is the Atelier Jupe Charlie sweater, which I really liked. And I made that in um, a fabric that really wasn't very stretchy that I got from Super Cheap Fabrics. And it's really quite acrylic-y, but it is so thick. I actually find myself wearing it quite a bit around the house because it's so cold in Melbourne at the moment. And the other one is the Vera top. I will insert photos so you can remember which, um, which jumpers I made in that. But the Vera, I put a band on the bottom. Now that's the one I made in the mauve lavender colour. I really love this top really love this top um and then the other one of course was this now i really like this pattern it's very wide it's very very wide and very boxy which i know is the look that they're going for because you can see on the images that it's very wide and very boxy so although i'd actually like to make a wind sheeter out of that and it's even got the little inverted piece that you might put it in a windsheeter or that we used to have in, I guess it was the 70s, Exacto windsheeters had that little piece in there. Two big contenders would be the Charlie and the Vera. I would make this top again, but I wouldn't use this fabric. I would actually use a fleece like a windshear is made out of or a french terry i do prefer a french terry on me because it's not as bulky so you find that um, some things are really really bulky and they just add lumps and bumps to you even though they're warm they add lumps and bumps to you so so definitely going with the skirt for this beautiful fabric and just weighing up whether I will do the Charlie or do the Vera. 
I think the viewer is winning at the moment, but admittedly, I have not made the Charlie in a V-neck. So, but I do love the Vera sleeves. You know those sleeves with the really long cuff? Beautiful. Really makes it look, it just elevates it, I guess. Really elevates it and makes it look much fancier. So, and as this is quite a dressy type of fabric and not a cheap fabric at all, I'll show you what stretch it's got. So it's got a fair bit of stretch in it, quite a good recovery, but I think this would be absolutely beautiful for that skirt. So that's what I'm planning on doing, but before that I need to make some coats. And when I say I've got coats to make, I have really got coats to make. So I am making this for my girlfriend. She wears a lot of black, but this is actually a black and brown sort of, it's not really burnout because burnout you can usually see through the part that is the burnout. But when I look at this fabric, it's quite thick. Actually, the nap goes down ways. I have found that with the coats, I really like the nap to go down ways because you're always rubbing your hands down. Um, so this is the fabric for that coat. The only problem is I need to make them all at the same time because it puts fluff everywhere. And this is the beautiful lining I chose for it. So, excuse me, I've got an itchy nose because that fluff just got up my nose. And this is the coat pattern that I made. Now, I've got a teddy bear coat coat that I call my teddy bear coat in this style this long style and so that's what I'll be making for my girlfriend and then out of my stash I will be making myself this one now it doesn't have a beautiful satin lining like I had for the teddy bear coat. It's just really got a matching lining. I might look and see what I've got in my stash that I could even just do the back panel in something fancier. I do like a coloured lining. And this was the teddy bear coat. So this is the leftover fabric from the teddy bear coat. And this is the beautiful gold satin that's lined. So with the leftover of the teddy bear coat, I am making an Acorns kids vest for Adele. I will insert a photo because I've got the pattern, but there's no pattern pieces. So I mean, there's, sorry, there's no image. And for Phoebe, I'll be making her um, a an acorn, kids acorn vest, the kids acorn vest and it's by Love Notion. I know that they also have um, a matching dolls vest in the, I think they're called 15 or 16 inch dolls that I've made the girls clothes for their dolls before, but I don't think I want to make a lined vest for dolls. I might make um, a little denim vest out of the leftover green denim because that would be something to do with those scraps. Um, and because dolls don't move, it doesn't actually matter which direction it's made in. It's not gonna make any difference to the wear of it. So <clears throat> I've got those coats to make. Two adults long coats. I'll probably do size four or five in the vest. I'm going to have to work out some sort of fastening now, Abby had said that she wanted a vest and not a coat for Phoebe. But when you think about the types of linings that are in these coats or vests, as they'll be for little girls, I don't know how they're going to keep them on. If they run, they're going to fly off. So I have to think of some sort of button closure. I'm not sure if I can do a buttonhole in... Um, <clears throat> fur fabric 
or if I need to do a bound buttonhole or some other method of closure, maybe I should just do a magnetic clip. I don't usually like the clip things because when it's undone, you can see it, the underneath. I have got magnetic bag clips, which are very, very tough clips. So that would work, but um, I'll have to see how I go and how much I like it. Because when thinking about it, I'm gonna to have to put a fair bit of interfacing inside that uh, vest front to enable closures on it, any sort of closures, because they're little kids and they'll just tear it. That's my sew for the next week. Get those coats cut out and trash my room. And after that, I will start thinking about seriously which top I can wear with um, the skirt in the beautiful sweater knit I got from the Dander Society. And that's all from me today. Everyone have a fabulous sewing week. See you all next week and bye for now.